You know, having honeybees on your property is a lot of fun, but it can be a lot of work. So what if you want to attract bees without the extra hassle? Well, solitary or mason bees are your answer. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple mason bee house that will not only attract them, but give them a great place to live. A great way to attract more solitary and mason bees to your yard is to make your own bee house. Now certainly there are numerous self-contained systems that include everything from the outer housing to the chambers inside where the bees lay their eggs. But if you have a few basic tools like a drill and a saw, for less than five dollars you can make a complete system and be up and running in just about an hour. First, you'll need the chambers or tubes that the bees will use to lay their eggs and where the cocoons will overwinter. Tubes that you roll yourself from plain paper work great for this. Fold and cut sheets of discarded paper into quarter sections. Then roll each piece around a pencil and tape the end. Remove the pencil and fold the other end over and staple or tape it closed. Make as many as you desire to place into the bee house. Making the bee house is a simple process as well. I used one untreated cedar fence board that I purchased for less than three dollars. From the top I measured down eight inches but any length will work. I used a carpenter square to draw the lines to guide my cuts. I then used my saw to cut the first piece which will serve as the back of the bee house. Next, I cut two more pieces to serve as the sides of the house. These were eight inches as well. Three more pieces of wood are all that's needed to complete the project. Make sure the screws you select are weather resistant and thin enough so as not to split the narrow boards. With all the pieces cut, connecting the boards was quick and simple. A bead of caulk across the top seam will keep the lid watertight. The final step after mounting the house was to insert the paper tubes and place the last piece of wood cut to four inches to rest on top. This helps keep the tubes in place. 